I am David, your developer on Duty, and in this video we will create a NeoVim plugin using Lua and Treesetter. The newest version of NeoVim comes with support for Treesetter, which is a fast parser for programming languages. It creates an abstract syntax tree, which gives you information about the structure of your code. There is a nice plugin called Treesetter Playground and it lets you inspect the abstract syntax tree. You can start it with TS Playground after installing the plugin. And now on the right you can see the abstract syntax tree with all its nodes. And each node also has the associated range. And you can see parent nodes and also children of that node. And if you move your cursor across, you can see on the left the highlighted code section. For example, if I hover my cursor over this call expression here, you can see that the whole call expression on the left is highlighted. Usually when I edit text, I use text objects. For example, I can change this word or delete this word or select this word. And now with a plugin which we're going to create, it should be possible to place the cursor over, for example, some function and then use the TreeSitter APIs to delete this whole thing or select this whole thing. So what we need to do is to get the TreeSitter node under the cursor and make sure that it's the main node, which also includes, for example, this uh, const expression and not just this identifier, and then get all those children and let's say select the text or delete the text. So let's get started. I create a new directory called treesitter unit, which is the name of my plugin. And inside this directory, I create a new folder called Lua. And in this Lua folder, I create a new directory called treesitter unit. And in this directory, I create a new file called init.lua. Now let's fire up NeoVim, but we also have to make sure to add this directory to the runtime path. So we say NeoVim dash dash command set runtime path and append the current directory to it. Now we can open our init.lua file and we can also open some uh, example JavaScript file to also test our implementation. Now in the JavaScript file, let me just write some example code. just for us to test it later. Now in the left split, we can write our plugin. Let's just print hello world for now. Let's reopen it. And now we can write Lua require tree sitter unit and we get hello world. So what we now want to do is we want to return some functions from our module. So let's just say local m equals to an empty table. And then in the end, we return m and in the meantime we provide some functions on m for example m dot select shall be a function where we can select this main node for this we need tree sitter so let's just require it local ts utils equals to require nvim tree sitter ts utils and this is a nice package which gives us some help functions. For this package, there's also documentation available. So we just write help ts underscore utils, and now we can see the documentation. And there's one function which is called get node at cursor, and that's exactly the one which we're gonna use to get the node under the cursor, and it will return the node. So let's write a local helper function which is called get master node. And here we use this tsutils function, local node equals to tsutils, get node at cursor. And now we have the node. And if I don't have a node, then probably there is no tree setter um, parser enabled for this language and we should throw an error. So we just write error 
no tree sitter parser found. Now let's check out the methods for this node. So we can write help tree sitter, and here we will find node methods. So we can, for example, get the parent or iterate over children and so on. Let's do it step by step. For help tsutils, there's also um, a function, a method called update selection. And this takes the buffer and the node, and it will set the selection to the node range. That's exactly what we need to select some nodes. Let's keep it as simple as possible. Let's just return this node and call it in our select function. So we write local node equals to get master node. And now we want to use this node to make the selection. So we write tsutils update selection. And for this function, we need the buffer number the current of the current buffer. So we can just write local buff number equals to vim api and vim get current buff. And the other argument is the node itself. To quickly iterate, let me just create a mapping real quick in my init.lua file. So I can just say map normal mode. And now I want to map vx to execute lua require tree sitter unit select and enter. And my map function just in the end performs nvim set key map. Now let's restart it. Let's hit vx to see if it works. And now we get our first error that nvim tree sitter ts utils is not found because this should be a dot. Let's try again. And you can see now the first node is selected. Now the problem here is that I not only want to select this um, identifier here. So if we go into TS Playground, we can see that what we did was actually select the identifier. I want to select this whole thing, right? So I would need to go to the parent and to the parent until I am at this expression statement. And then I have the main node. So now we need to find the main node of this line and there's an API which we can use called node start. And this will give me the start row and also the start column, but we are only interested in the row. So let's just get rid of that. And now we have to loop over the parents, but we have to make sure that we always remain in the same line. So we can just write while and let's just say we get the parent through node parent. Now we say while the parent is not equal to nil and not equal in Lua is uh, this symbol here. And we say the parent start shall be the same as our start row do. And while we're on it, we just say that our node will be our parent and our parent will be the parent of our node. So let's try it out again. And now you can see the whole line is highlighted. That's exactly what we want. There's only one minor problem. Just um, imagine we have another function. And let me just highlight this one here. Then you can see that the whole document is highlighted. This is because there appears to be also a root node which spans across the whole document and we don't want that. So let's also get the root node and we get that with tsutils get root for node. And in our while loop we just say that our parent shall be not equal to our root. Let's try it out again. And you can see it works. 
So now our first function is completed. So we are able to select the stuff, but we also want to delete the stuff. So let's also create the delete functionality. We again need the node and the buffer number, but instead of updating the selection, we want to delete it. So again, there's a nice API on our node to get also the range. So we can just say local start row, start column, end row, and end column equals to node range. And now we can use the Vim API to delete the text. So we just write Vim API, and there's a function called nvim buff set text and it takes a buffer number which we already have and the start row the start column the end row and the end column and now the text which shall be replaced so let's just replace it with an empty empty string let's also create a mapping for it so we call it dx to delete. Let's try it out. Now I put dx and you can see it successfully deleted. Now the last function is the change function. So we just copy this here and call it change. And here we can just say delete. And then we go into insert mode, vim command start insert, which will go into insert mode. So let's try it out. We create a mapping, change x to change. Now if I hit cx, you can see I can change the text. There's one caveat, if I change this one, you can see that the cursor is one column too much on the left, right? If you change the word, the column stays at the position. But if I change the whole thing, CX, the cursor moves and I don't want to do that. There's a quick fix to this. Instead of replacing the whole thing with an empty string, I replace the whole thing with an empty space. So let's just say that our delete function has for change as a boolean flag which i set to true in my change function and now i say local replaced for change and empty space or nothing and then i can see say here replaced so let's try it again And now you can see my cursor doesn't move. This concludes my plugin. I can also add other functions, for example, yank those uh, objects. But with selecting, deleting and changing, it's quite nice already. So I can publish it. I hope you learned something. Thank you very much for watching and stay tuned.